So this is a technique I did a few years ago and I hadn't revisited it in a while, but I was hired to do some more photos like this and it was a lot of fun. So I thought it'd be cool to share on here. It's really easy to try and you don't need a lot of expensive gear, which is nice. If you experiment with car photography, you've probably tried light painting, which is a technique of using long exposure and a light source to light a car in a dark environment. There are many, many tutorials on this. Maybe I'll cover it someday, but I don't think that I have anything to add to it that is unique. What we're doing today is a little different because we're using this rope LED light to fill in the background with an LED light texture and it also illuminates the car. One thing I find cool about this is that there's still an interplay between the car and the surface and the background. So there's, there's at least some context, unlike a lot of light painting where it's a car that appears studio lit in the middle of nowhere, which is not my favorite, especially when that's outdoors at night and there's no other lights around. I think it's kind of weird. Anyway, I digress. Let's jump right in. You will need this LED rope light, which I bought like seven years ago. Um, I found a similar one, uh, which is linked below. It is $17. Um, I think it's intended for home decorations. The original iteration of this device was made from a broom handle that I cut in half. Uh, I later modified it to use these extension tubes from cheap light stands so that I could fold it up and put it in my luggage, but you don't need that. Uh, you could probably do this with an extension cord as your power source. If you're careful, I have a battery pack that I use with strobes. Um, that's what I'm using as the power source, but you don't need that necessarily. You need someplace dark to do this, and you need your camera on a tripod with a fairly wide angle lens. I found the simplest thing is to get the camera close to the car and that LED is gonna provide the light in the background and it's gonna be the light source on the car. Uh, since it's dark, I recommend that you use a flashlight or move that LED strip near the car to, to set the focus and then switch the camera to manual focus once that is dialed in. We're gonna do a 15 or 20 second exposure and just walk around with this LED light. This is the most embarrassing looking photo process that I ever do, but um, it's fun and the result is unique, so ultimately who cares? A good place to start is a 20 second exposure, uh, F9 aperture and ISO 250. You can adjust from there, but that's a pretty good starting point um, and it should give you enough information in the raw photos that you can brighten it up and post if you need to you don't really show up in the photo because you're not staying in one place and your body isn't reflective enough or putting out enough light to make an impression on the sensor. Do a few exposures in each camera position if you, if you try a couple angles so that you have multiple background options. It's really easy to stack them in Photoshop and overlay them to combine multiple light trail passes. My technique is usually to try to make the light strip as tall as possible um, to get this sort of wall of light effect. But you could move it or make shapes or try new things and get totally different effects. You can crop in on details, you could do the whole car, um, just, you know, have fun with it. The LED casts a bluish white light on the car and that makes it look sort of techy or futuristic. So uh, if that's part of the story you're trying to tell with your shoot, it can be an interesting you know, technique for that application. I think that covers it. This is a fun technique that you can try without much investment and after you take the shot, it looks cool right on the camera. You don't have to composite a bunch of photos, which I just don't really have the patience for. Uh, no judgment, but that's just not me. If something can be done in camera, that's always my preference. If you try this out, uh, please let me know. If you do this and take it further and add your own creative spin, I would really love to see it. I think there is more creative potential here that hasn't been explored. I always say please like and subscribe as a throwaway, as a joke at the end of these videos, but I mean it if you like seeing this kind of photo stuff. Uh, I hope you do subscribe and recommend the channel. I want to keep delivering unique photo techniques and tutorials and that's probably the best way to make it happen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.